Support for a Comedy Advice Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Four different generations of Manscaped trimmers, and this is the latest one. Do you think the first one tells stories to its great-grandson of how it had to trim uphill both ways through the snow i'm not sure but you'll never know because oh man that one rhymed because this trimmer is what you're going to get the latest and greatest join over two million men worldwide who trust manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you that's right a comedy advice podcast listeners 10 percent off you might ask no 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 i wouldn't do that for you boys because i care for my boys and that metaphorically speaks for all of our balls. Uh, I've got it in frame for all you YouTube watchers. And it is amazing. Look at this. It's a beautiful, it's a wireless charger. Just goes right in. And this bad boy, check this out. You guys are going to hear a soft hum. Maybe I'll sell this as like sleep sounds. Oh, beautiful. And there's a little light. Amazing. So you can just, you're, you're like a little coal miner down there. Hopefully not Chilean, but you're down there. You've got your little light and then you can see everything. You know, the ad read tells me to tell a funny story of when I shave. And I really don't have one for you because I'm terrified, man. I have not shaved in so long. Obviously, you can see the hair growing up here. It was twice as long down there. I might have so much down here that it's helping reduce the carbon emissions and greenhouse gases. We've got little mini Amazon, but not anymore because I use this Manscaped 4.0, the lawnmower 4.0, and bam, all gone. It's like marble. You know, the, have you ever walked on that hotel? You've been in the fancy hotel. The floor is made of that marble, freshly clean, and you can almost see the reflection of yourself. That's the little Satanis down here, little Stephs. They are beautiful. So guys, <laughs> don't, don't be silly. Don't go and try and use your face razor or your face trimmer to go down here, go down south. Nay, nay, nay. What are you going to do? Are you using toilet paper to blow your nose that's been used already? No, you're not a silly goose. Be a smart duck, but get 20% off and free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code ACAP. You unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Well, hello, my dudes and darlings, my darlings and dudes. I think dudes can be darlings, but can darlings be dudes? I'm not sure. Is it like a square rectangle thing? I'm not sure. But all of you do darlings, welcome to a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I'm your host. And I am just pleased as pie, rhubarb pie. I know it's a little, it, I have never had rhubarb pie. That's a little secret, but you've never had this episode. So we're going to go in this one together. I'll hand you a slice. This is our first little taste. I'm going to put whoop cream on the second one, but for the intro slice, just a tiny taste for y'all. We've got Brendan Sagalo, comedian extraordinaire. He's got a special on YouTube. Links are in the show notes for that, for following him on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. He is a hilarious dude. He's also got a podcast. Here's the scenario. So I would encourage you to laugh love and follow. I think that's like the Julia Roberts method, although this modernized because she didn't have Instagram while she was gallivanting through Rome, India. And I didn't finish the movie. So I don't know where she went last North pole, maybe Poland. Did she go to Poland? It is cheap there. So she could get a bargain. Although I heard it's not so cheap there. Anyway, follow Brendan, give him some love. Give me some love. If you guys haven't already, <laughs> Give me your love. That's what I want. I'm a love monster, uh, but a cute one, like a, a koala. Like, I don't know what sound a koala makes, but in my mind, koala sound is going to be like, so send me that koala love. And I will just nom, 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 love you right back with a big koala hug. So uh, if you haven't yet, follow me on the socials on Instagram, especially I put some really funny little bite-sized clips for your consumption, little comedy morsels and subscribe, leave a review. If you haven't already uh, support me through my sponsors too. just got manscaped and yeah, that one beautiful life changer for me. I, I think I might 
if I get enough sales, I'll shave the head or maybe just do a mohawk or something. So support me there. Give me love. And I'm going to be doing an open mic spot, a book spot, actually 10 minutes at the Bridge Improv Theater in Tempe, Arizona, August 1st, five o'clock. Be there or be a shape, whatever one you want. I'll give you the option, but you don't want to be a shape. You want to be a really cool, well, I guess you have to be a shape. So never mind. Square, you squares. Come on, be a human shape and come on over to the show. I'm also going to be hosting at JP's Comedy Club. Again, JP, the guy, love that guy. August 24th to the 26th, I'll be there. And I've got some great pods lined up for you. I've got Chris Gethard. I've got some other little teaser. I'll tease you some more a little bit. You know, we'll have some <laughs> tickle tickles and I'll tell you some more guests that are out there, but not right now. Right now, I want to get you into that second slice of a comedy podcast, a comedy advice podcast pie. So without further ado, here we go. Yo. Hey, Brendan, how's it going? What's up, man? Thanks for uh, pushing this back, dude. I've had oh. uh, I was having scheduling things with my other fucking podcast. So, oh no, we're, here's the scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> oh, good. Well, yeah, just happy to have you on. I'm a big fan, and um, thanks. You look even better on the Zoom. So I it's feel just... like your camera is way better than mine. Holy shit! Real? Oh, really? Yeah, you are a little, bl- just a little blurry. But yeah, is it is it too? Is it? I've been using this for almost a year looking like this. <laughs> oh, man. No. You, you know what? I think I, well, I've got the, the ring light, but it looks like you might have that too because your angelic features are just popping. Oh, from... thank you very much. So, so I don't know what it is. I'm just using my Mac camera. I th- Me oh, too. I enabled on Zoom. There's, there's the ability to enable HD video. Oh, let me see. Let me see this. Are we be... going right now? Is this boring? No, no, no. This is fascinating. Okay, good. Okay, titillating. Good, good. This is, is great. Is it titillating? <laughs> I bet. I, ju- I think I just turned it off. No way. Okay. All right. I'm not even going to touch it anymore. Oh, it's all good. Want... You still, you look great, dude. You How are great. you, buddy? Oh, I'm fancy. I just, I popped open a can of Fresca. I feel like it's the weekend because I'm just letting loose over here. Oh, hell yeah. Carbonated. Dude. Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I I am thrilled. How's everything going for you, man? Uh, you know, life is pretty terrible, I think, I mean, at most times. But what are you going to do? You know, I took mushrooms the other day and it felt great. So, you know what? It's always well, I was going to say it's always a good experience with mushrooms, but I guess that's probably not the case. I think there are some terrible times. Yes, yes. There are some times where you accidentally take too much, which I did recently, but This has been like, you know, I've been trying to meditate and I've been trying to stretch in the fucking mornings and shit. And I and nothing was working. And then I just took a bunch of mushrooms and I'm like, oh, my my I think I don't even need a therapist anymore. (laughs) (laughs) That that is. Hey, that's the answer to to it all. I mean, you'll put headspace out of business. It's uh, just mushrooms. I I use the calm app, which is, uh, you know, it's it actually does work feels good. nice i i heard you talking because i i peeped an episode of mindful metal jacket the one with you and joe list yes great episode by the way oh i love um, joe so much i gem. love being able to like talk about that kind of shit with with somebody you know what i mean like a fucking mm-hmm. a, a a conversation with a little bit of substance and like openness and vulnerable vulnerableness yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I feel like, well, that's that's very off brand for this podcast, but I like how we're starting this way because this is really we're just starting at the bottom of the ocean, then we're gonna tread <laughs> up to the beach. Hang out. <laughs> well, tell me what's the vibe of this podcast? I'll fucking I'll get into it. Well, you know what? I actually I've got right here a little intro that I'm gonna unwrap for you. I, I made okay. it for you. Do you oh mind if I dive in? Oh yeah, hit me. Okay. All right. Will I get uncomfortable? Is this going to be uncomfortable? No. Uh. Well, depending. I do get into some details. Uh. No, I'm kidding. This should be. Okay. This should be fine. This should be fine. Hit me with it, baby. Let's do I'll, it. I feel like I'll, I'm. I'm. I'm watching my own funeral. 
<laughs> no, 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 not at all. This will be like just an uncomfortable house party where you don't know anyone and you're okay. struggling for things to talk about at worst. <laughs> no funeral. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. God damn it. I'm never going to sing again. But my name is Stefan Satani, and I'm your host. Joining me today, a very, very special guest. You may have heard him if you've been listening to the podcast for the past couple of minutes or seen him <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube. He is, uh, he's written for MTV's Joking Off, was the winner of the 2015 New York Comedy Club comedy competition, and his album, Not Now, More Than Ever, has been on number one in the iTunes charts for six days in a fucking row. He's the host of the He's Scenario po Here's the Scenario podcast. He's contributed a joke for the Comedy Central's roast of Rob Lowe, and he's bloody mental. Everybody, please welcome. Brendan Sagalo. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. Every time I hear my my own bio, it makes me want to eat a bullet, dude. <laughs> I like every single time I hear it, I'm like, you gotta change that. You gotta change that part. That sucks. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's so well, I, I don't know what you mean because I have not even achieved I can't even like say that I've achieved that and people believe me. So I think you're it's already like, at another level. It's like little things that you could tell that I wrote. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I in it, it, I what did I say? I go, oh, my album was number one on I, iTunes for six days in a row. I should have just got rid of in a row. It's you know what I mean? It's like so childish in a row. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I, you know I was a little hung up on that. And I was going to comment like, no, no, no. It wasn't intermittently, guys. Yeah. It was six days in a fucking row. Yeah, there but you go. Um, there you, go. you know what? Yeah. It was awesome. I, I did leave out lead singer and guitarist for Toxic Toast. But wow. I thought about that as well. What are you, Nardwar? What, what, <laughs> do you know Nardwar? <laughs> no, I don't. Nardwar is a uh he's a interviewee for like rap stars and stuff and oh okay he, he knows like little things you know he like gets little things about them he's like he goes he go, he'll go up to like little wayne and be like who's teddy the fish and little wayne will be like what how do you know about that what is that was my first fish i was two years old <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's you just reminded me of that Oh, that is fantastic. That That's all the info I have on you. So that's uh, uh, like the, the tip of the Nardwar. But oh, no, I, I, I've got more. We're going to ask about. Uh, yes. No, no. <laughs> well, well, I wanted to dive in and talk about your special. Not yeah. now more than ever. Fantastic yeah. name, by the way. I was Thank you very much. pulled in from the title and I watched it one and a half times. It was so good. Really? I was like, yeah. I watched it and then um, I ended up watching it over again because I was like, I need to remember to talk about oh. these specific bits because throughout the whole thing, it was like a nice donut with comedy sprinkles evenly distributed throughout yeah. the thing. It's not just like heavy sprinkles on one side where you take a bite and you're like, this is just chocolate and glaze. What am I doing with my life? It was just so nice. And I feel like from the crowd work where you're, you just went on a little uh joke fire about somebody sneezing which i thought was absolutely hilarious yeah 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 i you know what i liked about it was it was it was very um it felt like a like i it didn't take itself too seriously i think the the whole special like my the like mm -hmm, i knew what mm -hmm. i was getting myself into by doing a special while we've only been working for 3 months after a pandemic I have to yeah. do it on the on the the you know a roof. It's we still <laughs> couldn't be inside. So I was like, I guess you know it's very loose. It's it's mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like what I remembered from just doing stand up and writing. You know, the getting those pandemic jokes out of the fucking way too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I definitely agree with that. And I loved how it was loose like that because I think. <laughs> We're, we're sick of polishing things or I'm sick of things being polished up where it's like, oh, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and there was one part where you were making a joke and on the punchline, you were like, oh, oh sniffing a bunch of Coke. Oh, wait, cake. Fuck. Yeah. And it was just, it, it was kept great. That in. Yeah, I just, I like, I like shit like that. And it's also, you know, now as I, I look back on that special and I'm like, it's a little too loose for my taste. Like now I want something I want to start doing something tighter. I want my shit to be tighter. I want it to be more meaningful. You know, like I, I was also like, I didn't even, 
like I was like a slob in that special. Do you see my uh, my underwear is hanging out and shit? And, you know what I mean? And like all my clothes are baggy and I'm drunk. And uh, now I'm like, OK, I want to see that was easy. Now let me mm-hmm. try and do it do another one where it's like tight and good. And and, you know, talks about shit that I actually want to talk about instead of like White Claw. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. And and I know that you had talked about in the special and just now there was some getting that COVID material out of the way. The uh, the other material that was non-COVID related, how long had that been incubating or how long had that been cooking in the oven? Uh, just over the years of like shit that that's worked on the road and stuff. And, you know, it was mm-hmm. like, it's like I, I wish I had time to to really work on that hour like really make it tight. But I also like that it isn't. And I think it's something I'm going to look back and be like, oh, man, I think I might hate it in the past. But I'm going to be like, oh, wow, that was a that was a a thing in time. You know, it's going to be like a little time capsule for me, which I'm excited about. That's wonderful. And it it just made me think somebody had told me um, and, and I really liked this where it was like, if you're seeing something from the past, the, your past work and you cringe a little bit from it yeah that's fantastic because that means that you've kept growing um oh yeah dude I, I have other artists i was just looking at up videos of uh like old eminem stuff and there was one thing that he was doing when he was 25 where he was like on howard stern and he was being like he had to like do promo for him and he had to be like Hey, yo, this is Eminem, and I'm saying, hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. And I, I was like, oh, my God, if he – I bet that dude fucking cringes at that shit. That is got, that is awful. That is awful shit. Oh, my God. Sad. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> that, that probably was one of the things that led to the drug addiction. So yeah. I'm sure – Yeah, I'm sure, was, I'm sure he was on drugs when he was doing that. <laughs> That's – that's a great point because i'm sure he's like i'm not gonna do this shit sober so yeah (laughs) yeah god damn but um going back to the special too and oh and going back to how i first discovered you because i have been a fan for a hot minute and when i first discovered you it was actually i had mike cannon on the podcast and i was watching life begins and Uh i ended up seeing a guy next to him that was walking with him to, was it the comedy cellar? Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, dude, this guy has got to be a comedian. Cause he's just, it's really funny. And uh, I, yeah, I, dude, the- I, I didn't have sleeves on or anything. Like <laughs> yeah, I came funny. like that. I came like that, you know, like we were just gonna, we were filming. Yeah. We, I, he was just like, show up. We're going to film this thing. And it was in the middle of the fucking summer. And I hate, dude, I, hate the summer like summer clothes are just not clothes i don't like showing my fucking legs and 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 all that stuff and like i always feel like a little kid i have a backpack on filled with my shit so i was wearing like that's all i got that's all i got to feel cool is like a sleeveless shirt (laughs) and i just showed up and he was pissed i mean not super pissed but he was just like what are you doing he was like why didn't you try to look good i was like oh i thought we were just doing something (laughs) such a fucking idiot (laughs) <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. And, and yeah. you're you're so right. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, where we have to wear shorts and look like dorks like half of the year. Dude, and it fucking sucks. It's I, I'm just I think there's like one percent of men that look good in shorts, but I'm not one of them. My calves are not well defined, so they look like <laughs> these little chicken legs just sprouting out <laughs> of these awful it's oh. off i have the opposite problem and i hate it my fucking my legs look like turkey legs they're so fucking big i hate them but they're so pale oh uh, oh so yeah pale. i've got that oh, yeah. too i mean everybody when they they're like you live in phoenix and you're that white yeah dude i think i think i was bred to like live in a scottish castle and eat a turt like be eating oh, turkey legs you have fucking game of thrones energy <laughs> totally. yeah i'm like one of the guys that just from the lannister family that just dies in the first yeah, episode just fucking your sisters and everything <laughs> <laughs> that's not the first time I, i've gotten that uh but nardwar there we go um but <laughs> <laughs> <That's> hilarious <laughs> but um god i just lost my train of thought on that one but uh oh, oh yeah the... yeah yeah um but yeah, just going back to the special and then with going back to your special, I mean, mm-hmm. some 
two of my favorite bits and I don't want to spoil them. Um, but I loved the Ben and Jerry tour. Yes. So good. Uh, and then <laughs> one of my Man. favorite bits of like, probably maybe the, what, what month is it? June. Yeah. Maybe the whole, I'll say it. Fuck it. The whole year. Cause I was, it, it hit me so hard where <laughs> you were talking about women that are your friend. Yeah. That catch a whiff of your romantic Attraction. interest in them. Yes. Yes. That's actually like shit that I'm talking about more now. It kind of sucks that I did it on the special, to be honest. If I'm being perfectly honest, because now the bit, I'm, I'm such an idiot. I just kept going with it. And now it's like such a good bit. And there's things that are attached to it and everything. And that's kind of what I'm doing now. So I'll probably put that joke out again, I guess. But yeah, oh. that was like, that's like what I'm talking about. Like, that's the shit. I started really talking about shit that like matters to me. So like, the Ben and Jerry's thing I love because it's like silly and whatever, but it's the mm -hmm. like the the pain from like the friend zone stuff. I want to fucking dig into that shit, dude. It makes people I, it makes people like look up and like, you know, people get so fucking bored with comedy, dude. There's so many comedians that everybody's like, you ever go to a show and you're at like a showcase and there's like, you know, there's just like 10 comics that are all fucking, oh, uh, you know, the audience is like biting their fingers, dude. But then you go up and I go, I fucking hate my life and I want to kill myself. And everyone's like, all right, here we go. <laughs> we'll get into it. Oh, you're so right. That's so, I mean, uh, comedians can go up there and be like, yeah, you suck my dick or like just 80, 80 words for dick. And people are totally desensitized. They're just like, mm -hmm. all right. Yep. I've heard that one before. And then somebody comes up and is like, yeah, I got friend zone hard. I hate myself. I want to yeah, die. Yeah. 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 They're dude, like, oh, yes. this guy. I like yeah, this guy. I mean, if they don't laugh, they're at least listening. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and like, dude, yeah, I was. I was going to say, and if there's someone in the audience that's like, maybe if you get one person to be like, I fucking dig this guy and then they'll follow you and shit and they'll, they'll be fans for, for life. Yes, ex exactly. And I think that that's, that's such a good strategy for any comedian really, because once you start digging into that stuff, I feel like that's where you get that hardcore fan. Like, I mean, for me, that really hit at a level where it brought me back. Did you ever see Ratatouille? where the food critic eats the food and then he just zooms back to when he was a kid and his mom was making ratatouille. Yeah. And zo I zoomed back to Deborah Harbinger in seventh grade and where she's like, all right, see you later, dude. And I was yeah. like, ah, oh, and it uh, stung. And yeah. I was like, this guy gets it. Brendan gets you, it. You, you don't know. You're like, fuck, dude, what did that mean? Is that on purpose? <laughs> they know. I had a girl call me friend. I literally had a girl call me friend. She didn't even beat around the fucking bush. She was just like, oh. you're a good friend. She did that. Oh. But what are you going to do? You know, it's fine. Uh, you're you're going to write about it and make lots of money doing comedy around it. That's what lots of do. money. Yeah, I fucking wish. <laughs> there was something I was going to say about the the friend. The, oh, uh, God damn it. There was something you said. Oh, I'm never going to. I'm going to be. It's going to be killing me. Oh, Whatever. man. Damn, Whatever. Let's damn. move past it. Something oh. about that shit, though. Yeah, it's 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 to, to that point, it is or just to bring it all the way around town. It just really, I think, creates loyal. I was going to say customers, not customers. Well, fans, well, like because fans. Yeah. because the things that really hit home with them, nobody's going to be like, dude, this guy has like the best dick joke I've ever heard. I just remembered what I was going to say. Yes. Woo! How good does yes. that feel? Oh, my oh. God. So um, good. so like, like, like about that, where the fans and everything, so I'm doing a joke right now about like, uh, getting rejected or something like going in for the kiss and then pulling away, you know what I mean? And being like, Whoa, what the fuck? And getting, and having that weird situation. And I did the joke. I was, I was, uh, at governor's in long Island and I did mm -hmm. the joke. And then after the show, somebody walked up to me and they went, that just happened to me before the show. And I was like, what? That's crazy. And they're like, yes, dude. And they were like so into it. And I was into them telling me it. And I was like, and it's a, you know, I, I think it's a good joke. So hopefully they fucking, they were like, I know exactly that feeling. I was laughing so hard, at, you know, could you imagine? That's, oh my God. That's awesome. And, and God damn it. As you say it, unfortunately, this is turning into a sad day for me. I'm, the Fresca is not bringing it back up. Hit like me, I thought it me. would. <laughs> but, hit me with it. Yes. I do remember another time i maybe it was eighth grade god middle school is fucking awful for me but just yeah. leaning in for a kiss at prom no at uh 
Sadie Hawkins. I don't know what dance it was. Sadie the Hawkins. Dance. Did you go to school in the 20s? How old are you? Are you yeah. I, I'm like uh, Benjamin Button, I guess. No, I I'm I'm 47 years old. Uh, no, wow. I don't I Big don't know skin. what dance it was. Is that the yeah, ring light? yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the ring light. I'll give you the the link. I get a little cut for it, but um, yeah, it, I remember leaning in there and and just that that head sway, yeah, dude. and I was like, fuck. Ooh, the rejection. Fuck. Rejection hurts oh, like God. a motherfucker, dude. It happens. It's like it still happens. I was in a I was in this girl's room and we were we were like hitting it off all night. It was the night of my my special, actually. And we all were like getting drunk and everything. And like we went into her room and I, I you know what I said? I went, wouldn't it be weird if we made out? And she she was like, <laughs> "Ugh," you know, she probably got super dry from that. Oh, no. Yeah. Um. So do you think it was because of that comment you made uh, or do you think it okay okay yeah for sure dude and i'm talking about this in my act you just got to fucking go in and t- and go- take the l you know what i mean if you got to go in she goes whoa and you go oh sorry you know <laughs> and be cool about it and go oh, oh sorry felt the vibe i'm going to go over here <laughs> that, yeah exactly you know i tried to play it off as like oh i'm italian this is like we're doing just a side kiss i'm saying goodbye now uh, because no. it's all or that's nothing my man it's all that's or nothing fair. the that's side fair. kiss is a friend kiss that that's once you do that that is the seal of friendship oh the side, there's the no side going back kiss. No there's going no back. going back you you Maybe. can't just hover over where it's like uh oh, here we are Nope. Yeah, I know that would be super creepy, but I also don't know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> Do I am whatever s- you feel. Yeah, I'm so glad I don't have to deal with. You know what I did actually? I've told this story once before on the podcast, but I'm married now. Thank God, because now I don't have to deal with this shit. But mm-hmm. to get the first kiss, what I did is we were with some friends. We were at an Italian bar and restaurant in in the city. And um, I end up telling her because uh, we lived in New York at the time. And I was like, hey, Italian custom is I take this little, you know, the Grissini, the little. No. Oh, they're these long, crunchy. They're like mini breadsticks. Yes. Are they like, no. do they look like pretzels kind of? Yeah, they're pretzel in nature, but they don't they're not bendy like them. Okay. They're just a straight pretzel, yes. Italian pretzel. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know what this is. Yeah. And so I was like, so in Italian culture, in the Lombard region, I'll take a half, you take a half, and then we break it. Whoever gets the bigger half gets to make a wish. She was cool. like, oh, sweet. And so I was like, yeah, and she grabs it. And I go, no, you got to grab it with your mouth. Nice. And she was Brazilian. She said, Safadinho, which is Portuguese for fuck no. And so I ended up getting rejected there. But then in the car, she Ooh. took some gum and she was like, do you want some gum? And I was like, yeah. And she said, in Brazil, I take one half and you take one half. And then- Whoa, what a romantic story. I didn't even <laughs> see that ending. Oh, my God. I wow. know. I, it turned out good. So I got rejected at first, but then it ended up. I, this story is brought to you by Winterfresh, by the way. Yeah, um, but thank God for it, the gum. Yeah, thank God for the gum. Oh, that should be the motto. That yeah. Fuck. And maybe she was also embarrassed to do that in the restaurant you know that's true was right. that aggressive of me to like do it in a public place <laughs> that was... oh it was risky dude you went for it i like it and our friends were around us i can't remember why they uh... were not sitting next to us yeah i could see that being a little weird but what are you gonna do worked out yeah. the end. yeah we ended up and... making out in the car crammed with all of our friends going oh. to the club so whoa the lights were off i guess in a car but i don't know this is weird. I feel like you and me could have really hung out when we were kids. <laughs> you and me could have shared a lot of drugs. You know, I feel that too. I feel this <laughs> this chemical bond between us. Let's yeah. <laughs> that is uh incredible. I oh, so this is a comedy advice podcast. We okay. talk about you, then we're gonna get into some advice, Ooh. answer some silly questions from um or give silly answers to silly questions from the Reddit advice thread column. Okay. I don't know the nomenclature of it. Like R slash advice or whatever. That's it. Yes. R slash advice. 
Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Look I'm at you. Nerd. Are you a Are you a redditor? A ready? You know, I, I was a big redditor in motherfucking college, and then I just felt it taking my soul and like controlling my thoughts this is gonna sound very uh tinfoil Ooh. hattie but i was like <laughs> oh it's too much like the whole community feels like a like a community you know what i mean where it's like mm. it feels like a it doesn't feel like a website it feels like a cult like a cult in a way you know but it is a great website too so I every can, once in I, a while i'll go to it oh okay there you go i can kind of see it being culty and i to me i'm scared of it i'm scared to tread into the the threads because i feel like people just are are all very blunt and just malicious at some points yeah but aren't we fucking used to that by now like are we like you know is is our, are we all like all right trolls are around what are you gonna do that's i am i i am not my delicate white skin is is uh vulnerable to the sun and to reddit comments and so. yeah, mean comments all right well let's go <laughs> to the fucking advice column I, i'm excited for this all right, so we're going to jump into that. Before we jump into that, I like to get nice and centered and inspired with an inspirational quote. So I've got okay. one here prepped in the back pocket, ready to roll, but I like to ask my guests, give them a chance in case they have any inspirational quotes that help them when they're feeling down, when they just get rejected by a girl um, or anything, any scenario that can help pick them back up. Brendan, do you have, the, it's very pensive right now, any inspirational I'm to quotes? Think. There's a lot of pressure because... You know, motivational quotes sometimes are like so queefy, but there are like rap lyrics or something that I'll fucking I'll be like, yeah, that that is right. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I will say. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, dude. Fuck. I don't know, man. (laughs) It's okay. There's so many things that I love. I just love them all, you know? Uh, hey that's like a, a pretty the fuck that should i go on tiktok right now go to a goddamn motivational quote i am really disappointed and... in you so I, I think after this dude. you will have to sit in time out for like 10 minutes God this is damn it. this is disappointing i'll try to think of it throughout the show i'll try to i'll take half of my concentration oh yeah, yeah i was gonna say no 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 no. you missed your chance young sir because yeah. I, I will not accept any inspirational quotes after this oh, but it's so funny but that's okay because you know what? I am going to um, provide my quote, which actually is not by any person or rapper or anything. It's actually a robot called Inspire Robot. And so okay. what it does is it uses AI and it just plunges into the depths of scholarly works, perhaps the Torah, Shakespeare, um, Gandhi. I don't know mm-hmm. if he wrote or if he was just an auditor or a speaker, but all those texts and it just creates an inspirational quote from it. And uh, we're going to figure out, figure out what it means. Whoa. I know the hold the astonishment for just one second because <laughs> we're going to read the quote and then you're gonna be like, oh my God. All right. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. This week, Inspirebot says, you are beautiful. Just like a clown. And that's it. That's oh, the whole thing. Well, you know what? I I can make some fucking lemonade out of those lemons, dude. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. I think Juggalos you know, when it says you are beautiful like a clown. You know what clowns do? They make people laugh. And oh. you know what's you know what's beautiful? Laughing, laughing with your friends. So you're beautiful like a clown. Like uh, a clown's like the essence of a clown is beautiful. <laughs> if go. that's not an inspirational quote that should be a sagalo signature there's, right there's there. your lemonade dude <laughs> that's like that's like, that's like an email signature at the very end i don't even essence. remember what i just said i mean either the essence of a clown is beautiful <laughs> the essence of a clown is beautiful yeah brendan sagalo the essence of a clown 516 that, <laughs> that also sounds like a an armani scent essence of clown i feel yeah. like i don't know I don't know what that would smell like, but yeah, just a black and white commercial with fucking honks all over it. <laughs> R&B music with honks. Johnny Depp with just a big old clown nose. Yeah, the essence of clown. <laughs> oh my god! Well, all right, well, I now the words real quote, dude. No, I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa! Let's not denigrate <laughs> Inspirebot like that. Dude, you're right. Might, you're right. Might, you're right. 
he might be listening. So for fear of our <laughs> lives, let's just not talk shit about it. I'm so sorry to our God and spy robot. <laughs> All right, moving on. Now that we're nice and inspired to okay. the questions, we've got this first one found by our fan Tiff. Thank you, Tiff. It's from the Reddit advice column. It says, as a man, how can I make a woman feel safer on an elevator? How can I come across less creepy on an elevator? I don't make weird conversations or stare, but I feel like I still rub people off the wrong way. As a six foot two man, it's hard for me not to feel like I'm creeping a woman out. I don't stare or make creepy advances. I just want to know any etiquette that I missed. I, okay. I think it's like, if there's any etiquette, I mean, did, see, this, it seems like a creepy question to ask to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, there's, okay. Well, if you're worrying about that, then you're doing something. I, you know, I walk into an elevator, I go right on my phone. Fucking, what am I supposed to say? My lady, I'm not going to do anything to you tonight. No, I just go in right on my phone. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Isn't, am I wrong? Isn't you're right. Supposed to... What you have to do is not pay any attention to anyone around you. Like, I, I know it sounds rude, but honestly, yeah. that's the best thing for you because if you yeah. go in there and say, well, hello, my damsel, then it's just, it's just you're... weirder. Just go in like a person. No chick yeah. is like, uh, actually, I, I bet they're all just a little bit scared, but, <laughs> but I mean, come on, whatever. Just don't be a fucking weirdo. Right. It's so creepy. exactly. No woman ever was like me and my fiance. We met on an elevator floor seven. It was magical. I bet there are some etiquette though. There's gotta be something out there. That's like, when you're in a when a woman is in an elevator, you walk to the opposite corner. That's why the squares are there. Like shit like that. You know, that stuff that we've never noticed before. Oh shit. You're right. Yeah. Cause now because na naturally, I think us normies, we're just <laughs> you naturally go as far away from the person as possible, especially in yeah, New York, maybe. dude. Yeah. Um, maybe. So I don't know. Maybe this guy is posting up right in front yeah. of her or behind her or he's, facing her. He's, he's posting about it in the elevator with her. <laughs> How do I not be creepy? He's like, ma'am, could you proofread this for me? Yeah, Just... yeah, yeah. <laughs> With your beautiful eyes. <laughs> Would you mind reading that in that sexy voice that I yeah, imagine Yeah, please you read have? this out loud. It presses the stop button. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here for a while. I've done this before. <laughs> I would love to hear about elevator etiquette, though. Like, that seems like an interesting thing. Like, man, woman, whatever the fuck. You know, like, is there proper elevator etiquette? Oh, God, yes. I would love to get some literature on that because when I was working in Manhattan, I remember I, I well, there was a lot of things that drove me insane. And one of those things, the elevators, they don't have air conditioning. There's no logistical way to get air conditioning in there, right? Or is that I mean, just my elevator? It, they, I, probably your elevator i've been in elevators before that have air conditioning you probably just lived in squalor i would say i was a slob i mean if you look at my hair you can see that i can afford like a grand a month buddy rent, so. i just got a fucking air conditioner so we're in the same goddamn boat <laughs> i had my own personal fan that i would just cool myself with it was it was awful but i yeah that was one of the things is i wanted to get to my floor as soon as possible so i hated those people that would stick the arm in at the last second and be like oh mm. thanks for holding so i think oh, yeah. that's one elevator etiquette thing is if you see the door closing no no let no it unless it's an emergency yeah let yes. it close yeah i bet that fucking is dude that's the worst good for you good for you thank you you know i try i just yeah 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 I, what were you gonna ask? I, I was just gonna ask more elevator shit, but I don't want to talk about it anymore. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to keep talking about elevators. <laughs> I made it boring. I know, I get it. It was a dumb story. That's no, fine. It wasn't you that made it boring. What made it boring was we were talking about elevators. So eventually it would get boring. You know, we'll reach just... that floor of it being boring. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Now. Ah, there you go. <laughs> don't encourage me. This is this has got to stop. I like it. Um, all right. Well, we'll get off on this floor and get to the next question, which did we give? I think we gave some proper advice to that person. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess I think we what gave. they have to say, ask your female friends, ask that not, and don't ask, is there proper, uh, elevator etiquette? Uh, just go, well, what do you feel when a guy walks into an elevator? 
Just ask them that. And then hear, hear what they have to say. Maybe listen to women, you fucking tool. <laughs> I don't know oh, why I'm mad. I don't know why I'm mad at this guy. No, I'm just you, kidding. You piece of shit. No, no, I'm not. I feel like this asshole really needs to figure out some self-awareness because I think you're just going on in there and you're just assuming that you can chat with these women. So just wait until, oh, wait until the elevator's empty. I think that's the case. Don't ever go in there if there's a woman. No, just go in, be a human, get off on your floor, go in your apartment and jerk off like the rest of us. <laughs> Finally, some decent advice. I love yeah. great, great advice. A Beautiful. lot of this is going to end like that. All right. <laughs> just rub one out. That's like the men's yeah. manual for making things better. That's the restart button, man. That's the fucking, that's what you put the paper clip in. Oh, oh, we do that visual, that visual just got me <laughs> wincing, I feel, oh, but I get, all right, next question. <clears throat> this says, and this is the last question it says, should I leave my boyfriend? This is a little bit of a long one. So let's do it. I'm, in. I'm strapped. There. I'm strapped in. My boyfriend is currently in the Marine Corps and works long days and he refuses to give me a monthly salary of $10,000. I know he has this money as his family invested in different cryptocurrencies and became very wealthy just recently. I pled and begged him to let me buy designer clothes and he refuses, always telling me that cheaper clothes are more cost effective than expensive clothes. I recently met a man who was willing to give me $10,000 a month to spend on whatever I want. He's a married man who lives off unemployment. I don't know how he is able to produce the large sums of money, but he gives me my monthly salary, so I don't question it. When my boyfriend is at work, I will invite Harry over we usually have sex compared to my current boyfriend tom who refuses to have sex every day i need help reaching a decision on the matter of whether i should leave my current boyfriend for my new one or stick with my current boyfriend and try to become used to the lifestyle of not getting everything and that's it i mean a lot to a lot to unpack there well if you believe that story do you believe it I'm just, i don't believe that that shit's real at all why don't you believe it? It just sounds, you know, it. it's like so obvious. There, there cannot be a human on earth that is like, should I break up with my boyfriend because he doesn't get me designer clothes? Because he's well, maybe Dude, in Israel. I have no idea. Have, I don't know if I've you've ever seen anyone like that. I don't know if you've ever seen any episode of any season of 90 Day Fiance, but I found out that that is a very real thing. These people are real. These people are real. Yeah. Yeah, but but and greedy. But going on Reddit? <laughs> okay, that that might be a red flag. I don't think they would be in like, places yeah. like Reddit. Yeah. That's... It's like the people, you know, it's I don't see any duchesses or what not duchesses, but like people in that kind of situation going on Reddit and being like what do I do? I'm obviously the bad guy here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, I don't that's... believe it. But Let's just assume it's real. Okay. Okay. For the sake of that was me that wrote that, by the way. I just did you write that? No, 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 oh, no. Oh fuck, dude. That would have been a great bit. Oh damn. Just let me go off on how not real it is. <laughs> that was me. I made that up. I, I write Reddit questions on the advice column. I also just don't believe the name Harry and Tom. Then they feel like names <laughs> you make up. Right. That's what gave it away. Hair there. I haven't met a Harry since Sally. You know, Dude, it's just anyone watching this, go back and watch the tape. When you say fucking Harry, I swear to God, I was like, of course, Harry. Like Harry's the name to fucking go to. It's so it's so fake. But Harry, you know what though? If there if you were to place a name on somebody that could provide a ten thousand dollar a month salary, it would be a Harry. That's true. Or a Bernard, perhaps, but like I feel like Harry could provide ten thousand dollars a month. And if she, why wouldn't she call him Harold? You oh, know? if you're dealing with all this money, right? Wouldn't you call this guy Harold? And Thomas maybe it's Santa? maybe that's the pet name. Maybe that's kind of like the that's how she gets it. She's like, oh, sweetie, Harry, Good Harry, my darling. I'm yeah. not even convincing myself to be honest <laughs> with what I'm saying. This could be real. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to make you believe it. I, I definitely wrote that. No, I'm kidding. I did not write that. I mean, this. it's so oh. obvious. Just go with the other guy because you're treating the other guy like shit, you know? That's what I think, too. You're, you're cheating on this dude that is yeah. providing you 
with well i guess not happiness you should leave him yeah you should you definitely should well, leave she's him. not happy but she's fucking stringing him along you yeah know? just get cut out it off there. just because he's off. got money too it's like you know, how rich people stay rich by not spending their money you know Damn. why would you want like designer clothes another sagalo signature right there rich people stay rich by not yeah. spending their money so true yeah so true yeah, they really he, fucking they don't they don't they don't spend their money. Scrooge McDuck, you never saw him out at the mall, Bloomingtons, buying a no. new buying pants. He didn't even have pants. He would just dive into his endless pool of pants. gold coins. You know how much money you save on pants each year? <laughs> uh, yeah, but like, yeah. What was I gonna say? Perfect. All their money goes into their work, and like it goes into their money. All rich people's money goes into their money, right? I don't know what they, the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> I get it. You they make their money make money. Yeah. That's it. So like that's but, why a lot of them go bankrupt, but they still have shit in like you know. In, yeah, they, in their businesses, save me, save me here in their businesses. They, they've got shell corporations and they've got exactly inside their go. uh LLCs and they've got money in the Turks and the <laughs> Yes, so, yes. You or got it. You <laughs> dividends. Got it. I don't know. Stock market, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, Iron Bull, at Iron Wall Street. There we go with the little there girl. You, with the oh. little girl in front of it. Garbage. In of it. <laughs> Wait, in the of little it. girl in front of it? Or what we just oh, said? I don't know. I'm about <laughs> to say some stuff I don't agree with. <laughs> Let it out, man. Air the grievances. This is the place. This is I think brand. putting a little girl standing in front of the bull as an inspirational thing in the middle of Wall Street is like when Burger King is like it, it, it's like when Burger King tries to be like, hey, you, like we're not criminals. You know what I mean? It's like so fucking fake. Wait, wait, wait what, how did Burger King get tied into the criminal ring? What? what well, you know what I thought of? You know what I thought of? And I don't know how this is going to make me come off, but Please. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the thought anyway. Just know I'm a good guy. <laughs> um, so Burger King just put out a thing today that was like LGBTQ, uh, like positive. And and it was like, but it was taking a shot at um, uh, the chicken one. What's that fucking? Chicken oh, Chick-fil-A. One? Chick-fil-A. And they go, if you're LGBTQ or something, come in anytime you want, even Sundays with our new or like with our new chicken, blah, 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 blah. Just taking a shot at, you know, the, the homophobic chicken place. And yeah. I'm like, very nice. You Burger King. I appreciate the 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 nice sentiment, but you're fucking criminals, too. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I feel about that little girl standing in front of the bull in Wall Street. It's like it's surrounded by criminals. It's not real. That's true. And it's you know what? That's kind of like this Reddit question. You know, would that really happen in real life, too? No, I don't think would so. A, would a little girl stand in front of a bull? Exactly. I oh. think if they wanted to really depict it. No, uh, now I'm about to say oh, things. God. That yeah, don't don't say it. Don't say I'm it. Not. We're all there's going to be too much squinting in this episode. Too much squeamish people. Yeah, my my all right, my ideas and thoughts, they're gonna get gored and trampled over and we're going to ignore them. So <laughs> great. We will move you on. And, you did yeah, it. I, I did it. Somehow I did it. Yeehaw. I forgot I forgot what the uh the guys say, the Spaniards, as they Oh yeah, they do the have bull. like a saying, don't they? Uh Andale or something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, oh my god no i don't know what it is either i'm struggling for the word they do say something though and they go like uh, yeah yes yes oh uh, whatever okay well Arriba. now it's it's gonna bug right? me no it's not Ariba. i don't know what it is <laughs> whatever whatever let's uh, move past it yeah we're moving past it and we're gonna trudge into the end of the podcast Guys, thank you so much for listening. Brendan, oh, wow. you have been a delightful guest. Thank you so much for joining. Hey, man, thank you for having me. I'm sorry that I, you know, I could be a little bit of a bummer or a downer, but I look at it as realistic. You know what? I feel like we went up and down the Sagalo building. We took yeah. the elevator together and there was no creepiness. Whoa. And I felt, <laughs> I felt like that little girl in front of that charging bull because you know what? 
I felt at first scared and then I felt great because wow. that bull didn't come at me and you're a beautiful bull is what I'm trying to say. A majestic Buddy. creature. Thank you. That was, that was very impressive. Like autistic level impressive. <laughs> what you just did. So I've thank got you for having me, man. I, oh, absolutely. And my, one of my brothers is Asperger's and my sister is autistic. So I might have really? a strand of that. Yeah. In my, in my head. So wow. I don't know. I don't know how autism works. <laughs> Could, be. Could be. Me too, though. Oh, uh, but this, this is great, man. I feel like, you know, I almost when I look at your screen and then at just a quick glance, I'm like, it kind of looks like me. I feel like we could be really almost whoa okay maybe not just it in was... a way that's ins that's insulting to you by the way <laughs> that's, that's not you look great I, that's not be fucking great for me long hair look how fucking thin my hair is you look fat you know what you sport the cap very well my head is so gigantic i no. can't put hats on no i have a big head too this is this is what you want fucking oh. whatever this is i don't a know hat. what size it is it is a, it is a hat but, but I'm not going to take it off to check the size because my hair is awful right now. I would look um, like an old man. No, you. I, well, that's pretty impressive because with the hat on, you look like a young boy. It's, I would say, 20 tops. That's what I'm telling you, dude. This summer clothes. I can't figure out summer clothes. They, they all make me look like I'm 12 years old. Dude, what's, what makes it... Well, I don't know if it makes it worse, but my wife has started to dress me now, so now um my shorts they go higher so remember the shameful calves that i sh shared with you i also have to have my shameful quads oh where god there's no support muscle there it just looks like i don't know maybe chemo patient from the bottom down and then normal person from the top up oh my god i just envisioned me wearing those and then first of all i bet they feel great though oh man just air breezes through the Hell balls yeah, it's so good nice draft oh my Wonderful. god i wish i could pull that shit off where me too i i wear it anyway but I bet you could you look like a fucking guy that could you got the long <laughs> you know hair you got like you know you're a very structured face oh my you god. could pull that shit off you look, oh you my like you got fucking like you work out no i definitely well i i do it on youtube now i actually in the pandemic i lost about 50 pounds wow it was all muscle because I used to go to the gym and now, oh. yeah. So oh, that's a sad, sad yeah. ending. Wait, way to bring it down. Way to bring it down. Buddy, thank oh, you for man. having me, man. This was fun. It was nice this getting to know you, dude. Yeah, likewise. Likewise. And if you are ever in Phoenix, Arizona, I will love to catch a show, promote the shit Fuck out yeah. of it. Fuck and, yeah, um, but speaking of promoting, what have you mm -hmm. got going on? Where can people follow you? What do you, what would you like to follow? Uh, just follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'm doing a little bit on TikTok. I'm trying to get into it, even though it's made for pedophiles. I'm trying to get into it, you know? So follow me on all that stuff, at Brendan Saglow. Thank you very much, dude. Woo-wee! What an excellent episode with Brendan. Oh, man, I really enjoyed it. It was like, I feel like we could have been friends if we went to the same high school together. All Brendan, Steph, Steph and Brend, Breffin. Man, that sounds cool. That sounds like a, a, a meal, like second breakfast or something. You want some breffin? Hell yeah, I'd love some breffin. It actually sounds like a brand muffin, which doesn't sound good, but we'd figure it out. We'd have four years to workshop it in our punk band. Um, but anyway, you guys have been phenomenal. And all the links are in the show notes to be able to follow old Brandy Brend. And... <laughs> Okay, I should stop trying to nickname him, especially since he's not here. But follow Brendan, watch his special, give him some love, listen to his podcast, and then give me some love too. Once you're done, if you've got any love left inside your system, if you haven't unloaded all that love, why don't you unload some on me, okay? Follow me on Instagram, subscribe, leave a review, get that man scaped lawnmower 4.0. Man, is it wild. Well, it's not wild. It's actually quite tame. Because it just, I, I've had so many scares in the past when I'm shaving, but this one, it, it keeps me calm, man. It's like, it's not a cup of coffee. It's like a nice meditation app. I'm breathing in, out, and I'm really mindful. And I'm not hairful. I'm hair empty. Thanks to the Lawnmower 4.0. So you can do that. You can help support me and help me 
achieve my dreams, which is to do this full time, 40 hours a week. I'm only doing like 20 right now, but I want to crank it up to 40 and I want to feed my family. I want to look my cats in the eyes and be like, your food was paid for, for by my jokes. Little Steph with his long hair was cranking out jokes, unloading laughter with his guests. And that bought you your food, little ungrateful cat. And she won't care. She, will, she doesn't understand, but it'll help me feel better. So help me feel better. Unload your love everywhere. Okay, guys. And that should be a quote if it isn't. Carpe load. Carpe love load. I'm not sure. All right, guys. Gooch, smooch. Love y'all. Mwah. Mwah.